What's up guys, I'm Chirag and welcome to part 2.7 of the tutorial series on AWS Cloud Formation. So guys, in this tutorial, we will go through the user data for EC2 instance using AWS Cloud Formation. So when do we use user data? So for example, if you want to run any automated configuration script or any automated task at the launch of an instance, then at that point of time, we can use user data. So I have already covered user data in one of my tutorial, right? So that is run services on instance startup. So this tutorial is basically the part of the deploy flask application on EC2 instance tutorial series, right? So if you want, you can refer this. So now moving along. So here I have the cloud formation template ready. So this is the same template that we have used in part 2.1 of this tutorial series. That is this one. So we have borrowed this template with few modification. So modification in the sense that we have added these two properties that is key name and the user data, right? So why key name? Because in this tutorial, we are going to assess edge into this instance that has been created by the AWS cloud formation. And here is the key name that we will be using. So this is flask.pem, which I already have. So this is the name of the existing key pair that we have mentioned as a value, right? So maybe in some other tutorial, uh, I will show you how we can create the new key value pair for the AC2 instance and how we can access edge into that using cloud formation, right? So that's where we have added key name on line number 21. And then on line number 22, we have added user data. So here uh, we will be defining the commands that we want to run or any automated configuration script that we want to define under user data, right? So now on line number 23, we have defined a function that is function colon colon base 64. We can also define this function as exclamation like this, right? But let it be. So basically uh, base 64 function returns the base 64 representation of the input string. So the input string is this one, right? And this function is typically used to pass encoded data to Amazon EC2 instance by the way of user data property. And then on line number 24, we have the sub function. So basically this is the intrinsic function, which basically substitutes the variables in an input string with the values that you specify, right? So for example, we want to grab certain value uh, from any other resource. And then we want to define something like this. That is exclamation refer to some parameter, right? Some resource name. So at this point of time, we don't know the value of this parameter, right? So this sub function will substitute this value at the runtime. So that's where uh, you can use sub function. But if you don't have, or if you don't want to substitute any value, then you, you can also use join function, right? So that's sub function basically. And then uh, we have defined the script that we want to run. So it starts with hash exclamation bin bash. Then what I want is I want to update that is sudo apt get update hyphen y. And then I want to install docker compose within that. And I just want to create a simple directory uh, called as sample, right? So this is just for the demo that I want to show you. So you can add certain commands that you want. For example, you want to start any service, then you can say services start service name and it's relevant command, right? So this is the template that we are going to use. Now, once you are done with the template, navigate to AWS management console and click on cloud formation service. Now, once you are there, click on create stack. So here we are going to say template is ready. Upload a template file, choose a file. I will say user data dot YAML. Select that, say next, give a stack name. I will say user data, select the instance type. I will say t2.micro, say next. We will leave all the option as it is as a part of step three, say next. And again, say create stack. So now the stack creation is in progress. Let's wait. So now as you can see, the stack creation is completed and now we can click on resources and here we will have the physical ID of that instance. We will click on this and it will 
take us to the EC2 management console, right? So here we have the instance that is up and running. So now we had also added the user data, right? So we can have a look at the user data by clicking on action, instance settings, scroll down to edit user data right now we can't edit this user data so this is the same commands that we have kept in the cloud formation template in order to edit this user data you need to stop this instance and then you can edit it and restart the instance so now select that instance and copy the ipv4 public address navigate to terminal because we want to ssh into that instance so the command is ssh hyphen i that stands for the identity file and my identity file name that is flask.pem followed by the username of the operating system. So it's Ubuntu at the red IPv4 public address, say enter. Yes. So now here we are, right? We hope that all the commands that we have defined is executed successfully. So now by default, a Docker Compose or Docker is not installed in the Ubuntu 20.04 LTS operating system or version, right? So let's say sudo docker. So as you can see, the docker is installed successfully, right? Now, if you want to look at the logs of this execution, then the location is slash where slash log followed by cloud hyphen init hyphen output dot log. Okay, so this is the location where you will be able to locate the logs, say enter. So here they are, right? So let me show you. So here it is the updates command, right? That is sudo apt hyphen get update. And then somewhere it would be So here uh, we see DKPG configure unpacking. So this is our Docker installation command that's going on, right? So here are all the logs that you can go through. So now let me clear this. Now we should be also having the sample directory. So if I do ls, then here we have the sample directory created, right? So this is how you can define the user data within AWS Cloud Formation template. Right. And guys, that's all I wanted to cover in this tutorial. Until that time, if you want me to do tutorial on any use case or service, then please leave them below and I will try my best to come up with a tutorial as soon as possible. And if you have any queries or comments, then again, please leave them below and don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel and see you next time.